I'm just going to ask you, sure. you say this is a non-regulated um, structure, facility. Uh, why would the guidelines mm -hmm. want to include independent living other than just it being part of the continuum of care? What, what are the advantages? Um, there's many advantages because independent living, we, we're seeing services, more and more services now being provided at the home side. So we know that with the growth of outpatient care, as well as the connection with the community, that between the outpatient connection, the community connection, and the understanding of people aging in place and desiring that, and that universal design is kind of impacts the whole, all the different settings. So there's things in assisted living that are taking place, just like what hospice, what we talked about with hospice, hospice can take place in an independent living setting. So trying to be aware of where care is taking place, and we're seeing that shift, where we used to see it more in the hospital, and now we're seeing it more in outpatient, but we're also seeing it at the home. So trying to be able to understand that continuum from that perspective, I think, is the most important. Um, and I think that is the main reason, actually, is because of the continuum of care.